Over the last five years, we have seen an explosion of concealed carry pistols. We're starting to see more and more micro carries being introduced, more subcompact carries being introduced into the market. And with those new introductions, we're also seeing more innovation as well. The G-Force Arm Rapture, or their GF9, is the newest pistol in that arena. We're gonna be looking at that in this video coming up. Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we are going to be talking about a new pistol to the market. I've had it for about two months. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get out to the range as much as I would like at this point in time, but I do have the first 100 rounds through it and we're gonna be talking about that in this video. The things that I like, things that I don't like, and let you guys decide whether or not this is something that you should be looking into. Full disclosure, this pistol was sent to me uh, by G-Force Arms. They said, hey, here you go. Uh, I saw this pistol for the first time at SHOT Show 2023. I was super excited about it, but they delayed the release to make sure that they got some things right with it. And I think that they did cover a lot of great uh, points in this introduction. And we'll talk about that in this video. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would greatly appreciate you guys considering doing so. A thumbs up and a comment really helps the algorithm as well. My question to you guys is, what is your favorite concealed carry pistol? For me, right now, it is the P365X Macro Comp or the CZ P10C Optics Ready version. Those are the two that I'm switching back and forth on, um, depending on what I'm wearing or where I'm going and so on and so forth. So I would love to hear what you guys have to say about that. All right, so let's jump into it. Let's talk about the GF9 Rapture from G-Force Arms. This was sent to me. Again, not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent. I'm gonna talk about the good with the bad. You guys know that's how I do things. And uh, I, I think that there are a number of things that they've done right with this pistol, but I also think that there are some areas that they need to improve on as well. Let's dive into it. It is basically a Glock 26 clone, um, but has some differences. And we'll talk about that here in just a second, but uh, length, width, height is all going to be about the same as a G26. One of the things that I like about this right out of the box is the grip texture. Uh, that's the thing that I noticed as soon as I put it in my hand, I was like, wow, this is really nice. I like how it feels. I prefer a aggressive grip texture, whether it be like the CZ P10C, uh, the SIG, P365 versions uh, is good, but it's just a little on the uh, unaggressive side, I guess is how I would say it, but it's still enough that I'm okay with it. This puts it right where I like it. So that's the first thing that I have to point out. It also has uh, texture very high on the, or on the frame here to get a good bite with that support hand and texturing that is going to be further away on the frame for either your index finger or your non-firing hand uh, that is going to kind of give you a bit of a memory bump, I guess, if you want to call it like that. And uh, just the slightest bit of shelf to kind of really dig in on that with your non-firing thumb for recoil mitigation, especially for you guys that like to run 124 or 147 grain bullets from a short barrel, a three and a quarter inch barrel, just like the Glock 26. Um, that little extra there is really going to help with that recoil mitigation. So good on them for that. All right, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. Does it take Glock mags? I know you're already typing that in the comment section right now. And the answer is, no, it doesn't. It has a proprietary metal magazine that is a 13 round magazine. And that's one of the things that I really did like from G-Force is they took the idea, the concept of the Glock 26 and they expanded on that by giving it a little bit more capacity. With nine millimeter, capacity is king and being able to use a magazine that is 13 rounds, that is basically the same size as a Glock 26, I thought was a good way to go about it. Now, why doesn't it take a Glock magazine? 
I think that is kind of one of the missteps. Um, and I'm only going to go ahead and let the cat out of the bag on this and, and talk about the uh, improvement that I would like to see. But one of the reasons why G-Force did not use Glock mags is because the grip angle on this is not going to be as aggressive as a Glock firearm, whether it be a Glock 19, Glock 26, uh, Glock 34, what does it matter? It has the same aggressive kind of thumbs forward type design behind the grip angle. And this is going to be more Browning 1911 Smith & Wesson M&P 9 uh, angle here. So that's the first thing is the angle of the magazine to get you a little bit more upright in your grip. Uh, is preventing the GF9 from using Glock mags. That's number one. Uh, number two is with it being metal mags, they're not as thick. And so that means that the frame, at least the grip on the frame, is not as thick as a Glock 26 as well. So there's another reason why they went that route. Um, and I think that that is a misstep because if you're looking for a subcompact pistol, having the ability to utilize Glock mags would have been great. I would have loved to have seen a metal mag that takes 13 rounds, but also still be able to use my Glock 19 mags with it too. Allow it to use both, I think would have been a game changer for this pistol, for sure. But it is what it is, so there is that. All right, so let's talk about the trigger on this. Um, exactly what you would expect from a Glock trigger assembly, uh, especially since this is kind of a clone. So there's your take up, a little bit of a creep, and then a break over. I would say better than a Glock, but still around that six pound mark, as you'll see in the B-roll uh, here in just a second. Here is your take up, and then your break again one more time there it is and break over so I would say a little bit more refined than a gen 3 Glock 26 but about what you would expect and I'm sure that as I get more rounds through this we're going to see um, improvement with it but at the end of the day nothing really to write home about uh, so there is that uh, the trigger shoe is more flat faced than that of a Glock 26. So that is an improvement, but as far as what it feels like, it's not going to feel any different than what you would expect from a OEM Glock. All right, so there's the frame. Let's move up to the slide. First thing that you're going to notice is a very similar design to the Glock 26, but it does have front slide serrations. Uh, not very aggressive there, uh, but enough for me to get a good bite on there if you are going to do um, you know, manipulations up front. So there is that. It does have fiber optic front and rear sights that are Glock compatible, so that is good. I'm not a big fan of anything other than a blacked out rear sight. Uh, that's just me. When I'm looking for that front high vis front sight, I don't want any distraction on the back of uh, the pistol. But if that's you, there you go. We've got fiber optic rear already uh, from the factory. That's pretty cool. But the biggest innovation that I would say when it comes to this style of um, pistol is the fact that, as you can see, there is no optics plate on the optics cut. I have the Siley Cat Pro on here. I think that is a good, robust red dot. I've done a review on it already, and it is an RMSC footprint that can directly mount onto this pistol, so it is completely optics ready from the manufacturer. But it doesn't stop there. You can also direct mount a RMR footprint red dot as well. So if you wanted to do an RMR or maybe the Siley Wolf Pro, you can do that as well. And that's something that I really, really do like. Now, the downside to it is, as you can see with the RMSC style footprint, I do have a gap to the front and rear of the red dot. And some people may not like that. 
Uh, aesthetically, yeah, it doesn't look all that great, but moving up to a larger like RMR style footprint, it's going to feel that a little bit better. We all know that a direct mill slide is the way to go uh, so that you can mount the very specific red dot that you want into that slide. That's the way to go. But for individuals like myself who review a pistol one week and a different pistol the next week and I have to move a red dot from one pistol to another, having that type of feature on multiple different platforms just makes it easy so I don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of different red dots. Or as a reviewer who is looking at different red dots, moving one red dot to this pistol and then changing it out next week to test a different red dot for you guys makes it extremely easy as well. I can move from RMR to RMSC footprints with this and use this as a test bed. So that is something I really, really did like. So really, really great um, design feature by G-Force Arms there. Uh, I really do appreciate that. So what has been my shooting experience? Uh, only got about a couple hundred rounds through this and uh, it has been okay. Um, let's look at the first magazine. Okay, first magazine wrap. Okay, so the first magazine did have one failure to fire, and that is something that I ended up finding to be a problem with the Fiocchi 115 grain ammunition that I was using. I ran um, 50 rounds of that through this and had about four failures to fire out of that 50 rounds, but the Bellum 124 grain ammunition that I used uh, had no problems whatsoever. Uh, with that being said, I want to say a huge thank you to Global Ordnance for sponsoring uh, this video by providing the ammunition to do this test and uh, testing on another pistol that I'll have here soon. But uh, I will say that this uh, did have a couple hiccups with the 115 grain Yoki 9mm. So, Take that as you will. We'll see if that continues to be a problem in the future as it kind of wears in a little bit and we'll go from there. But um, out of the first 100 rounds, we had about four failures to fire, all from the same um, ammunition type. I did take one round of that and put it into a uh, Grand Power Excalibur match and it shot that round. So. Uh, we'll see if that continues to be a problem. Might be a striker spring type of situation. We'll take a look at that here in the future. Talked about the magazine compatibility. That is something that I wasn't uh, a big fan about. I would have loved to have seen it still use Glock mags as well as their proprietary mags as well. So uh, maybe we can see that in a future iteration of this. And then the only other thing that I will say is a bit of a um, problem right out of the box is the dingus on the trigger here. This thing is um, a little wonky to say the least. If you do not, if you just, if you just get your, uh, just a little bit of your pad on your finger on there, uh, that's kind of how I shoot. Sometimes it's going to hang up as you can hear. That noise is the dingus hanging up against the frame. Now, if you get your full finger on there, you kind of get it right in that crook of that knuckle, um, no problem. You don't, it's, you, don't, you don't hear any of that right now. As you can hear right there, if you really press in on that dingus, no problem. But if you don't get your finger completely on there, or you get it kind of sideways or so in there, you can, you can hear that it's kind of hanging up Still shooting, 
it might be just a nuisance to some of us uh, individuals that collect pistols and, and shoot a lot, but there is that. One of the other interesting things is, as you can see right here on the recoil spring, the recoil spring guide is kind of protruding out a little bit. I've disassembled this several times. I've put the recoil spring back in its correct position and it still, for whatever reason, is protruding ever so slightly. Now that is a metal component. It's not a uh, polymer like the Glock double captive recoil spring system is. So that's a positive. You don't have to worry about it becoming a problem. But for people who are looking for flush lines, that could be a problem uh, for you. So just um, keep in mind that this is going to be a budget friendly pistol. We are looking at um, somewhere around that 300 to 350 mark. Uh, it has some great features with it but uh, it also is not going to be maybe as refined as a five to $600 um, pistol like the Glock 26. So keep all of that in mind when deciding whether or not this pistol is right for you. So far, I've enjoyed it. I like the way that they've got the red dot uh, optics ready cut set up. Um, the grip texture is really nice. It is shot very well. Um, with the uh, exception of that one ammunition type. It just did not like that for whatever reason. But at the end of the day, it has done very well. All right, so the last thing that I wanna talk about is holster compatibility. I have a Bravo Concealment Glock 17 holster here. This is their Torsion 3.0 and it fits no problem. I've also tried it with a hidden hybrid holster Glock 26 mag, <gasps> it fit as well. But now that I've added the red dot, it no longer fits, so just keep that in mind. Make sure that yours is optics ready. If you have a Glock 26 or a Glock 19, Glock 17 mag, this should fit, so keep that in mind. So there is that. There is kind of the first impressions of the G-Force GF9 Rapture. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. I'm obviously going to continue to shoot this and use it kind of as a test bed for red dots as well. So um, we'll go from there and we'll get some more ammunition, uh, some more rounds through it and uh, let you guys know in the future how it is going. At the end of the day, I really do appreciate you guys swinging by. Thanks so very much. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. The Live Laugh LARP podcast is up and running. I'll have that in, down in a pinned comment and I uh, really do appreciate all the support. With that being said, we'll get out of here. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye y'all.